Season one finale is coming your way right now. What's up everybody, I'm Melissa New and welcome to Framed. So we ended the season one tour in Bend, Oregon, where we were privileged to sit with one of the top 10 wedding photographers in the world. But he's not just a photographer, he's a Photoshop and editing guru, providing products to thousands of photographers worldwide with some amazing tools for their business. And I have to tell you, he's up to something pretty cool and we're lucky enough to get a sneak. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm from Hawaii, yeah, born and raised in Hawaii. I'm uh, third generation. My great grandparents came over as immigrants from Japan, and um, my grandfather was a carpenter. I, yeah, I was really close to him, and I think I, uh, I, you know, you always wish you'd spent more time with people after they're gone. And and uh, he died when I was away at college. I miss him. He was just a great human. You know, he was a. He made time for everybody. Yeah, I'm very emotional. I think that that, um, that helps being a photographer, that you are emotional or sensitive to some degree, and you have to be. Otherwise, I don't think there, you can really capture any depth in, in other people if you're not sensitive to their emotions or your own emotions, you know? And, and I, I know that some of the best photographers that I know are the same, you know? They just get really emotional. They'll cry at the drop of a hat, you know? and or just sitting there just watching some stupid kids movie we start crying you know and uh, but I think that's what uh, makes a, a photographer who's really in touch with their their client or their subject. Uh, 19 years today my husband and uh, have two awesome boys who are 9 and 12 Nico and Kai. Nico wants to be a photographer and he, he's assured me he's gonna take over the business one day and he's nine. They've gone on a few shoots yeah they've gone on a few shoots and they have fun making faces at the people behind my back, you know, and climbing on my shoulders, which I have to inform them they can't jump on my shoulders while I'm taking a picture, you know, but they're, they're great. Uh, it's a lot of fun going out and shooting. Actually, we got uh, the Instagram on our iPhone, you know, if you use that app. Well, I got Nico set up because he has an iPod, so he's got an Instagram, so he posts his pictures, and now he's got this little follower of my photographer friends who are following him to see his pictures on Instagram. It's pretty funny. It's been almost 20 years now that I've been shooting professionally, and I started doing uh, headshots and model portfolios and actors in Hollywood, and so I was living in Los Angeles at the time. And uh, when I got a chance to photograph a wedding, I just immediately knew this is what I love because I love the emotion and the connection and was so happy for autofocus because I, I was crying and couldn't even focus anyway, you know, just, oh God, you know, just <laughs> autofocus save me, you know, we get these uh, great moments and I just loved being a part of that and capturing that and so I think that's why I really focused on weddings and I think family portraits, um, actually pregnancy portraits are one of my favorite things to do too because I think there's a lot of emotion there. I think that's a big part of why I love, why I did photography. Although I am totally a technical geek too, which is, yeah, I guess you have to, well, you don't have to be, but it's good if you can be a little technical, especially these days, you know, but um, I think that's one of the reasons um, I've been successful is that I, I have a grasp on the tech, technical. I love that part, I could get into it, and yet I really love just the hands-on, touchy-feely part of photography as well and being able to blend the two together, I think is important. Yeah, so we got a bunch of mountain bikers and we're gonna do a few different shots. Uh, the first shot we're gonna do is we have a pro biker and we're gonna have him jump over this little gap right here. And we've got some lights in the tree. We had uh, we hired a professional tree climber yeah. to hang that lamp for He's us. He's pretty hot. He's really hot. You might want to hook <laughs> up with him. Check him out. And uh, then we have another light here, which is going to be our main light, basically that way. Boom. So I want to light it while he's in the air. So it looks like a cool, crisp, almost studio style lighting. We're using the sun 
as a backlight, so to rim light them. So my goal is to get the sun perfectly behind him while he's in the air. Uh, then we're gonna use our alien bee heads, which are these up there, and one in a tree. And this is gonna be our main light. It's gonna hit him with enough light to balance the sun, the ambient light. And that one's gonna do a little kicker, a little rim light around the edges, just to separate him a little bit more. And what I'm doing, I'm setting my exposure for the sky, for the background, and to get it down to a sinkable shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, I had to use a neutral density filter on the front of the camera. And uh, if you've been with us for a while, you know we use these quite often when we wanna sync a studio flash outside in bright sun. There's really no other way other than syncing it or getting your shutter speed down to 250th. And if I wanna shoot at four, five, five, six to soften the background, the only way to get that shutter speed is with a neutral density filter or high speed sync, which you can't really do with the studios type flash. So this is our little trick to be able to balance the sun and the flash together. So we're gonna, uh, basically it's a matter of timing with this shot here. I did, I climbed the tree. Well, not, well, not me personally, but someone that looks kind of like me, not quite as handsome, not quite as buff, but someone like me climbed the tree and set up that light. So I don't recommend you do this at home. It's very dangerous. Uh, the biking stuff's no problem. That's not dangerous at all, but setting up the lights is the dangerous part. So be careful. All right. You're brave too. Thank you. What, for having a kid? Yeah. Yeah, being That's pregnant? That's brave. <laughs> You're just a lot. <laughs> That's true. That's braver than me. I can't raise one of those. <laughs> how, how long you been doing this? Uh, I've been riding mountain bikes for like 12 years now. Yeah? Yeah. How many times do you think you've fallen? A lot of times. Yeah? Yeah, I don't think I could probably count how many times that I've fallen. <laughs> so you do this professionally? I do, yeah. Yeah? You Travel make the big around bucks? and, uh, yeah. Tons yeah. Of money. All like, kinds didn't you of money. just get paid a quarter? Yeah, I got paid this? a quarter. It was I found it on the ground, which oh. was, but it still counts. All Heck right. Yeah. <laughs> Good paycheck. Well, you're awesome. Thank you for putting on the show. Thanks. <laughs> now you made a bitchin' noise. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Are you guys are you guys considered professional? Not by any means. Okay, Myself so, anyway. So why are you here? I mean you gotta be good. Just like to ride the tracks. Yeah? Yeah. Do you I guys kinda got suckered into this? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know anything about these jumps. You got so, suckered? Do you I, have insurance? I do. <laughs> okay. I do have health insurance. <laughs> so it's good. Well we're getting paid a lot of money for this too. That's a that's a big deal. You're what? We're getting paid a lot of money for this. Oh for we? sure. Okay. Absolutely. Heck yeah. You got your agent involved and everything? Absolutely. He so, negotiates. Are you nervous to be in front of camera? Not really. No? No. I'm just nervous about being in front of people and crashing. 
Okay. <laughs> well, don't be nervous. I won't be. You guys nervous? A little bit. I, I, I mean, yeah, for right? me personally, it might be funny to see a crash. Yeah. So just do something. Sure. For the just entertainment do factor. Yeah, for the entertainment factor. <laughs> for nothing else. <laughs> good. All right. Well, good luck, fellas. Thank you. Well, what we're doing now is uh, the lighting notebook, which is uh, starting out as a book on uh, photographic lighting techniques. And basically, what I wanted it to be uh, to have the feeling of a, a manual, um, not a manual, but a like Da Vinci's notebook. I wanted a, a lighting notebook that was filled with just documenting exactly how all these shots were done, and to go on location and to cover every little thing that we experienced or did to create these images and, and covering a wide variety and also to to not only document exactly how it's done for people but to create images that are, that are in and of themselves worthy of being used for a real project or they, some of them are real projects some of them were just creating projects to, to be able to have a variety and some of these textbooks on lighting they just you know have a mannequin in a, in a studio and they move the light around and to show which is great but it's very sterile and textbook. You know, they don't put a lot of thought into the creating the image. It's really all about the lighting. So what we want to do is to put a lot of thought into the lighting, but also the whole image so people could say, wow, it's a cool image. And wow, cool to see how they lit it and did it. We're into a lot of the uh, iApps, iPhone and iPad apps. So of course, I'm, we got to do an app from this because then we can make it really interactive where people can just type in, you know, I've got $500 in equipment, I'm gonna do a female, I'm gonna do a headshot, it's gonna be outdoors, and punch those keywords, and then boom, here's a list of potential scenarios that match. I soon realized it was not a project I could do on my own, and uh, I have a great friend, uh, which I think you guys are gonna to meet today, Benjamin Edwards, um, I shot his wedding almost 10 years ago, and he became a wedding photographer shortly after that, and um, I've seen him, again, I get emotional again. Yeah, it's been awesome watching him grow, you know, from the images he showed me the first time he started photographing. We're like, yeah, those are pretty good, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's great, man. Keep at it. Woo! <laughs> to look at his stuff now and go, damn, I wish I could do that. You know, he's got some gorgeous work. I mean, he's really put his heart into it. and. And he's another person who's uh, driven by something bigger. And I think that's why we connect so well, is that he's, he'll, he'll tell you, but he's, he's definitely not driven by fame, fortune, or anything that most people um, might be driven by. And I think that reflects in his art, obviously, in his passion for photography. And we've always wanted to work together real closely on a project, and we've done little things here and there, and he's assisted, and I've assisted him, and, but we've never had like a project that was the two of us working side by side and so this was the perfect opportunity and it's just worked out so awesome because we feed off each other and there's there's a there's a fun competitiveness but it's not a adversarial competitiveness you know it's like we both try to like do something to help inspire the other you know it's like I got to be a little better because I'm inspiring Ben and I'm, I feel he does the same thing so we get uh, it's a great um, synergistic relationship. <laughs> All right, we got another cool shot to set up here. This one's going to be more of a portrait of a mountain biker covered in mud. We have our little mud bucket here and fresh mud, which the girls are having fun splattering mud on their handsome mountain biker dude. 
and what we want to do is get uh, some nice cool lighting on him and we're going to set up a panel of uh, giant scrims so two panels from Photoflex and put an alien bead behind that to give a nice soft light from the side and then we'll use a Photoflex kind of a strip bank on this side here to put a little edge light, little rim light and that'll be powered by another alien bee head both triggered by pocket wizards and in the background what I'm hoping for is to get a couple of other mountain bikers uh, coming through turns, taking a couple of jumps and we're gonna hit them with a couple of other heads too uh, from alien bees uh, synchronized to flash them from the side to add a little light just enough to pop them out of the background as they come around but we have enough sunlight so we're gonna mix the sunlight and the flash and the main thing is the portrait the guy in the front we'll have him right here uh, he's gonna be covered in mud probably a little cold but that seems to be a theme for us is working in extreme conditions although this is not so bad today so uh, if our mountain bikers uh, can get their timing right and I can get my timing right we should have able to have a Pretty cool shot. I remember my dad was a uh, awesome photographer. Uh, he wasn't a professional, but he was into photography. Is since he was in high school and he you know, did all these beautiful black and whites of our family, real candid, beautiful, natural stuff. And he had a little dark room in the bathroom. So I was kind of exposed to it from a young age. And uh, my dad gave me one of his old film cameras and let me get started with that. So at that point, I didn't know that it was gonna be a profession. I never actually thought about it. You know, cause honestly, I didn't even think you could make money doing something fun like photography. I thought. I've got to go get a job, you know, and uh, work at IBM or something like my dad did. And he was, he was sort of like that closet creative where he had this technical job working at IBM and yet he'd come home and do his photography and all this and listen to music and he was real creative, uh, but he never combined the two into a job. So I guess I just never assumed that that could be done, that you could have a creative, fun job. And so I always did photography and was totally into it from, you know, early teens. And, and really it wasn't until I had gone through my fashion design, my brief career in fashion design and realized I hated that. Then I got my big break in selling shoes, <laughs> Nordstrom's, and uh, actually learned a lot, which is, you know, those funny things is everything you do in your life builds you to where you are. And I learned about selling, like I work at Nordstrom's, which is great customer service education. And I learned about um, sales techniques and little subliminal things that they do just to enhance the environment to sell, you know, which is a lot of things that I use now to help sell pictures. I got into multi-level marketing. This is it. I'm gonna sell water filters and make a million bucks. So I left Nordstrom's, water filters in hand, you know, knock it on, and then all of a sudden, you know, none of your friends will talk to you anymore. They see you calling and they're like, oh crap, you're trying to sell me a water filter. Failed miserably at that. And then I'm sitting at home going, I have no job, I have nothing, and my roommate said, can you take some pictures of me? I wanna do a calendar for my boyfriend. And uh, so I was, let me, let me think about it. Yeah, so I said, okay. So I did some pictures of her, set up a little studio in my garage, ordered these little super cheapo lights, you know, from the back of a magazine. And uh, they actually came out pretty good. And I, I'm the type I can go to, go to a bookstore, get a stack of books on lighting, peruse that for a day and a half, and then I got it, you know? At least I think I do, <laughs> you know? Of course, there's a lot to learn. You have to get your hands on and, and learn. So at least I had enough to get decent pictures from that. So that kind of just snowballed, and she loved the pictures. She showed it to her friend. Her friend said, oh, I want to do one for my boyfriend. And so I was like the calendar photographer, you know? <laughs> then I started doing, you know, portraits, and uh, which kind of naturally. Then I had a friend who was an actor in Hollywood, and so he needed headshots. So he said, do my headshots for me. And, and that worked out well, so he showed his friends and I started doing headshots and it wasn't until I got married, which was 19 years ago, that I really got into weddings. So it sort of evolved and really it was just um, just following my instinct, uh, things that I love to do. You know, the photography grew because I loved it and I was into it and I think having that emotional connection was very um, key to my success as a photographer. And so that naturally led into then hiring assistants and second photographers and training them, which then I realized I like teaching. It was very fulfilling um, to be able to see someone else 
be successful too. And I realized that that was a, a thing that I had to pursue more is just sharing what I, what I had done. People would always say, you know, aren't you afraid? You're teaching your competition, you're sharing all your secrets. And I guess it's just, I never really think about it that much that way. I decided, well, I'm gonna start a photo association and invite all the photographers and tell them that I'll share all my tricks, I'll start. And so I started Central Oregon Photographers Association and I sent out calls and emails and letters and to everybody in town and said, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna teach a workshop on Photoshop. I'm gonna tell you what I just learned at the latest WPPI that I went to. And you know, I'm gonna try to get a speaker to come down from our Photoshop in Portland, talk about the latest gadgets and gear and you guys come if you want. And you know, so slowly, you know, people came and they would sit there in the corner like, What's his agenda? You know, he's trying to get something. He's gonna like gas us all in here or something. <laughs> you know, eliminate all the competition in one swoop. Or and uh, and so they slowly, you know, they started to come and people would come. And so we had this thing grow and it, it really broke down the doors. I think after time to photographers working together here in this town. Since then, we've certainly had an influx of all these younger, new photographers. We got a lot of great photographers in town and and. They've got a different attitude, I think, than the old school photographers when I first moved here who were very closed off and very afraid of sharing anything. I had all the business I needed when I moved here. My business grew, you know, from L.A., which I was doing great in L.A., and I thought, well, I'm going to move to this little town in the middle of nowhere, you know, and people know Kubota because of the tractors, not because of, you know, Kubota <laughs> photography. And We're in a cave. <laughs> we are. What are we doing in a cave? Hi, we're in a cave. We're, we're in, in a cave. cave. We're, we're in, in a cave. cave. We're on a cave. <laughs> that was. We're not rappers. <laughs> um, we were doing a photo shoot. Uh, ben and Kevin, um, mostly Ben, had this concept for doing uh, this portrait of a bride with a chainsaw and goggles and with a long veil and blowing the veil back with a leaf blower. So, yeah. so yeah, we're gonna see how it turns out, but I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I think it's really cool. Yeah. But I still need a blanket. We're I still know. in the cold. I have another one in my car. With me? <laughs> <laughs> you have been everywhere today. You've been <laughs> running and equipment and planning and phones. Tell us your role today. Um, well, basically my job here is kind of just to keep everything rolling and in one fluid direction so that we're not having people run all over the place. Today was a little crazy, as yeah. you saw, lots and lots of people on set. But um, yeah, I would just say to keep keep things organized and make sure we don't lose equipment and make sure our models get here on time. Administrative, you could say. Awesome. <laughs> so pretty much the go-to. Yeah, maybe. They can't or just the you. gopher. <laughs> the gopher, no, they cannot do this without you. That's yeah. what Kevin said. One of the first people that uh, responded to my posting for an intern was, uh, was Alicia. And I had met her before and where she, she secretly tried to get to know me by buying my iPhone. <laughs> oh, that I posted on Craigslist. No, I was immediately impressed by her initiative and her energy and her enthusiasm and her um, persistence. This was something I look for in all of my team is persistence. I, uh, I came up with a saying that I had in one of my presentations is that uh, no answer is not a no answer which I try to remind myself is that if you're not getting a response from somebody, it doesn't necessarily mean they don't like you or don't want to work with you or that they don't want to give you what you want. They just haven't had a chance to respond or they're thinking about it or there's other things going on. So I think persistence to the point of uh, walking that line between persistence and annoying is good. You know, it's a good quality that you have to go for what you want. You have to be persistent until someone says, you know, absolutely no, stop. Leave me alone. <laughs> You're like, okay, fine, move on. Um, and and she was good that way. You know, she was persistent and energetic. And uh, and as soon as she started, I knew she was the right 
right person. So we're gonna go spelunking now. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Benjamin had this crazy idea to do um, not only a bridal portrait, but uh, a really different bridal portrait, which you'll see here in a little bit. Uh, and so we've got a couple of different things going on. Our main light is a pro photo speed light. Sorry. Our main light is a pro photo mono light hooked up to an octobox. Uh, octobox is an octagonal shaped light box, and it makes a beautiful. Uh, very directional but soft light, which is one of the reasons why Ben wanted to use it, just the main light here. And we also have a little mini trampoline, an exercise trampoline, so the bride can get big air. And because we really wanted her to be kind of suspended, her veil blowing in the air, and kind of have this, um, we, we were kind of joking, talking about this shot, saying, oh, how about she's a bat in a cave, we should put bat wings on her and flying like a bat in the cave. And then, well, maybe we'll just put her on a trampoline and have her flying in the air like a bat or, you know, ascending through the cave walls or whatever brides do in caves. Or a chainsaw. <laughs> or so in the back we had a Alien B 800 and we fired it with a micro sink. Um, so the idea there is just to get some nice backlight, kind of light up the cave and just kind of rim light her. And I mean, I guess, you know, why do you put a bride in a cave? Well, I mean, we just got tired of like shooting the same locations above ground. All right, and then the other thing we did was we had a leaf blower, battery powered leaf blower, which is actually a pretty handy accessory to have in your studio or on location whenever you want that elegant windblown look or you get the veil blowing. Uh, it's really fun if you're doing portraits of kids in the studio because you do a little blow of that in their face and they just start giggling and it gets them all going. So it's a, it's a fun way to get energy going in a shoot as well as to make some kind of a motion, some action that added the, the halo, the rim light behind her. And uh, so it's a pretty simple setup, but actually getting down into a cave and making it all work is, takes a little bit of planning, but when you have a crew of 500 people, it works. It works great. Check it out. Check it out. Let's do it. Let's do it. I love that. <laughs> to fire all these lights off, we had to actually use a combination of a few different things. Uh, for the Pro Photo, there is a dedicated uh, controller that goes right on the camera. It's really nice because you can control the power. Uh, and by the way, you're probably thinking, how did you get power to a Profoto monolight in a cave? Well, there's battery pack, it's called the Bat Pack. And that's a portable AC power, you plug it right in, and that powered our monolight. One other shot we wanna do is to do uh, a speed light with a Rogue Grid. This is a new product that we really love. It's a nice little attachment for the speed light that gives it a, uh, a beam of light, and there's little grids you can attach to change the beam, how wide the focus is on this beam. So we're gonna attach sort of a medium uh, grid to the Rogue Grid system, put it on a speed light, hold it on a pole directly above the bride as she jumps on the trampoline, and what I'm looking for is sort of this angelic uh, sort of ascension thing, or going to the light, or alien abduction, wherever you wanna go with it, you know, use your imagination. But the light is gonna be right above her, shining straight down like this beam of light, and use that backlight again um, for the back first. So that's another shot we wanna try. And then I think uh, Ben had some sort of a light painting thing. Yeah, do, I think right? maybe we'll paint with light. So we'll take a couple of flashlights, we'll have the bride sit on a rock and be super, super still. And I think uh, maybe we'll go with maybe 30 seconds for our shutter, uh, F2.8. We'll stick it on a tripod, lock it down, and hit the shutter. And for maybe 30 seconds, we'll walk around and paint the bride uh, with light and see what we get. Check it out. With flashlights. With flashlights. <laughs> In a cave. In a cave.
There are a lot of fantastic photographers that are just not known yet for whatever reason. Maybe they don't want to be known, or maybe they just weren't at the right place at the right time. You know, a lot of how you get famous is just being lucky, you know, or talking to the right person that connects you with the right person. So I'm not going to say that I did it purely because me, you know, I'm so awesome, I'm so special. It's not that way. I admit that uh, a lot is connections, is luck, is uh, being ready or being in the right place at the right time, but being open to luck I think is important too. I think you make your own luck. There's a lot of other photographers that are amazing that are that I admire that I'm like, I could only wish I was that good. I don't want to sound cliche, but I think it you really have to focus on what you love most. I think Guy Kawasaki is an author. Uh, said something to the effect of uh, nothing matters more in the world than knowing what you did mattered. My, my goal is to do something that leaves an impression, not leaves my name as a famous person, but that I helped people or I changed the world or changed the industry for the better or made a better life legacy for my family. You know, so that's what, always what drives me is that. The motivation has to be or should be something bigger than yourself. And I know that everything that I have is not because of me, it's because of my team and the great people. We're coming at you from Bend, Oregon, where we're about to go meet up with a real live action hero. Let's go. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yeah. Is my hair bad right now? No, it's good. Okay. Photographer, for, for, for photography. <laughs> that are totally awesome and <laughs> <laughs> This is Claire, and she is known as the Queen Bee. That, yeah, Kevin came up with that, <laughs> with that name why years you, and years ago. And why are you the Queen Bee? Why am I the Queen Bee? I, I don't know. I mean, I kind of, I decided to. I had my whole other career and job, yeah. full-time job going. And what was that? I was a personal trainer, wow. a fitness instructor. That's, that's why you're so what buff. What I did for that years and years, and. Um, but I, you know, as many spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends know that you are the free assistant on weekends at weddings. <laughs> so you very quickly get recruited. Yeah. Um, come on, honey, we're gonna, I got a wedding this weekend. Hold Can you help me out? <laughs> um, so after, after many years of just helping him on weekends while I was doing my job during the week, uh, we decided to start a family shortly after moving to Bend. And I said, you know, I wanna be able to be at home with my, kiddos and have more flexibility and so I kind of tapered off my clients and decided to start helping Kevin more and more mm -hmm. and that first year was definitely a challenge because he had been solo guy yeah. for quite a while and uh, you know and it's hard to kind of relinquish some of that responsibility and mm -hmm. that control and trust someone someone else to take that over and yeah. well when we talked to Kevin he actually got emotional when he talked about everything that it is that you do for him and his business and it's your anniversary today so 19 it, long years 19 yeah. long years she puts in the long <laughs> but as far as um you know a husband wife relationship working in business together it seems like a lot of photographers do that mm -hmm. do you have do you have advice for women that are trying to support men or men supporting women you know how to juggle that do you have any advice I think I, like I said, the key for that first year when there was just a lot of figuring things out is just yeah. to really define kind of who's going to do what. And mm -hmm. so, because I think it's really important, when, especially as a business owner, you want to feel like you have a sense of ownership of certain responsibilities right. or things that you can say, you know what, I did that. Our core values are very much the same. The company culture we've created mm -hmm. is because that, that's very much what we both believe in. We've had great opportunities to travel together mm -hmm. um, and to, we've just learned a lot about each other and our children get to see how we work together. Do you have rules of uh, no talk and business at the dinner table? Like when you go home, is it no business? Kevin's better about that than I am. Because <laughs> I'm always thinking about business. Uh, and 
you know, so I'll bring something up at dinner and he's like, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Like if I have come home and I am done working, I need yeah. a break. And so, I mean, that's, I was telling your husband earlier that if I, if there are things that I need to talk to him about and we didn't have a chance to talk to it at the office that day, you know, I'll say, there's some things I want to talk to you about tonight. Can just so he mentally can be prepared and yeah. be in that space. You're the business side, right? I, I, yeah. I like to. He's creative and he, yeah. you know, will want to do everything. And I'm uh-huh. kind of feel like I get to be the, the filter. His sister and I, yeah. Like he should get to kind of. We've, we've been designated the filter. Just like, okay, honey, that's a great idea, but let's. <laughs> Yeah. Let's think about the big picture. Let's think about the business side of things. Well, I love it. I love seeing a good solid marriage and a good couple working together. I think it's just really cool. That's, so kudos to you great. guys. Happy so, anniversary. Thank you. <laughs>
I guess I just want to be known for making a difference. Um, and I don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the photography world. Uh, it doesn't have to be in the business world. It, you know, I think that would be a nice thing to have on my gravestone. You know, he made a difference. And it could be in the lives of a few people, inspiring, you know, other people that have turned around and done something more amazing than me, but maybe I gave them the spark to do that. And I've heard a lot of stories like that already, so I know that that's happening. And uh, so I don't want to jinx myself, but I, I'd be I'd be pretty okay if, if I died today. You know, I don't feel like I'm leaving the world unfinished. Uh, I feel like I've made a difference. I'd like to make more of a difference. I'd like to see my grandkids and my great grandkids maybe uh, do the same thing. But I feel like I'm on the right path. I don't. I won't have any regrets. Mahalo for hanging out. I'm Kevin Kubota. And I've been framed. Boom. Boom. Woo! <laughs> I can now personally say that we absolutely adore Team Kubota. He even bought the crew some yummy Hawaiian eats. Aloha. Take a look out for his lighting notebook. It's going to be incredible. So it's time to announce the winner of Frame Your Best Shot Contest, Category Relationships. And here's the winner. Congratulations, you just won 250 bucks from our friends over at Richard Photo Lab. Nice work. Man, I cannot believe that season one is over. We seriously had such a good time. And hand me a tissue. This is depressing. <laughs> so we're off first thing in the morning to start season two CD tour. Wait, what? You want longer episodes? Okay, you got it. Wait, you want more than one episode a week? You betcha. You want us to come to your city? And you want more education, Photoshop, more fun, crazy challenges? Ah, it's gonna be awesome. Don't miss season two. Why? Because it's all about you.